Have you guys ever wondered what would happen if a Sambo world champion faced off against an Olympic gold medalist wrestler in the octagon? Well then, the fight between Marab Devashali versus Henry Cejudo is not what you're looking for because Marab got second place at the Sambo World Championships. But, you know, close enough. Close enough, I think. This kind of matchup right here is every grappler's wet dream. I, almost every grappler. As a lot of you guys know, my background's in Aikido. That's what I've dedicated my life to, and that's what I believe is the best base for MMA, period. I don't think wrestling, sambo, muay thai, I don't, and none of it, none of it stands a chance against Aikido. At my dojo, we've had tons of Penn State wrestlers come through, and two of my teammates, Shelly and Bertha, absolutely put clinics on them. Like, it's not close at all. So this wrestling versus Sambo matchup, it's for second place. But nonetheless, it's still a very, very fascinating scenario we got here. And, you know, it's interesting. I never knew Marab competed in Sambo. It wasn't until I heard Aljamain Sterling mention it recently on one of his videos that I looked into it. And, yeah, he got second place at the World Championships in 2019. Despite the fact that... His background is not in Sambo. He never trained Sambo specifically. But obviously, given the fact he got second place, Sambo isn't real. I mean, it's not actually a thing. It, the best analogy I have for this would be, you know how at night when you go to sleep and you have dreams? That's Sambo. Because Marab's original martial art that he grew up doing is called... Kortuli Chidaioba. This. <laughs> Basically, very similar to folk style freestyle wrestling, but you get more points for trips and throws. So mix in that background with all the MMA training Marab has done, and in 2019, he was the second best combat Sambo player in the world. So yeah, the sport is fake, but that doesn't mean it's not really, really, really good. But honestly, you guys want a hot take? I think Marab is slightly overrated as it stands right now in MMA. Ever since Marab 50-45 to Peter Yan, it's been a pretty common consensus amongst MMA fans that he is the best bantamweight in the world and he is going to be champion very, very soon. And I'm look, I'll be honest, after watching that fight with Peter Yan, I was in shock. I could not believe I saw Yan get dominated that badly. But I think there are some very important variables we need to assess in the Peter Yan Marab matchup. For one, Marab, really high-level grappler, and right now in MMA, I don't think there's anybody that has cardio as good as him. Nobody. Not Sean Strickland, not Colby Covington, not even Volkanovski. Well, Volkanovski, that, that's pretty close, but the thing about Marab is, he does not seem to pace himself. I mean, from the very beginning of the fight to the very end, he goes hard. So, of course, credit where credit is due, but... I think there's something regarding Jan's guard that really allowed Marab to exploit him. And that is the fact that Jan is a really high-level boxer. And one thing he loves doing that he's really good at is, as soon as his opponent is throwing punches at him, he covers up with a real traditional boxing guard, he'll catch the punches on his hands, and then he'll counter. He does this in pretty much every single fight. But the problem with that against Marab or any wrestler, to be honest with you, is that when someone shoots, the first thing you want to do is get underhooks. That is the number one defense when someone shoots on you. But Jan's takedown defense is so good that a lot of times he doesn't even need the immediate underhook to prevent the takedown. But against Marab, someone who was constantly shooting on him, nonstop, Jan's defense really got exploited. And that is because, over and over again, rinse and repeat, Marab, he'd move in with punches, Jan would cover up, and the second he covered up, Marab was shooting. And every single shot he was able to get really deep on because Jan wasn't able to get any underhooks. So we had to fight really hard to defend the takedowns. And because they were absolutely non-stop, he started gassing out in the later rounds, and it just got worse and worse and worse for him. It was a real snowball effect. 
The second big variable here was the calf kicks. You know, it's interesting. In Peter's fight before that one against Sean O'Malley, his calf kick defense was really good. He was knee pointing him, which is probably the best calf kick defense you can have. Jose Aldo was doing this to Pedro Munoz. At worst, your opponent just completely misses, or at best, they kick you right in the knee, which is horrible for them. But against Marab, Peter kept trying to reach down and grab the kick, which just doesn't work when it comes to calf kicks. Because it only took about three of them before Jan was severely compromised. And I'd say the last big variable we need to look at is that Marab looked huge against Jan. He just looked bigger. They're about the same height, but Marab was so much wider. I mean, just compare their back muscles. There's a huge difference there. So, look, like I said, still insanely impressive he did that to Peter Yan. But this notion that Marab is completely unstoppable because of that fight, I'm not so sure. I mean, the fight before that one against Jose Aldo was a very different fight. Marab's cardio was still completely off the charts. He was shooting takedowns nonstop, but he didn't get any of them. I mean, in fact, he didn't even get close to any of them. The entire fight was just Marab pushing Aldo against the fence. He wasn't really doing anything, but at the same time, neither was Aldo. So when it came to the decision, you have to give it to Marab. Still crazy impressive, but not as unstoppable. And then the fight before that one, Marab fought Marlon Moraes, where he got rocked really badly, was basically out on his feet. Moraes completely unloaded. I mean, he threw the entire kitchen sink at Marab which he should have. I mean, every single fighter on the roster would have done that. Marab was in serious trouble, but he's also inhumanly tough. So he survived, Marais was gassed, and Marab finished him. But again, go back another fight for Marab. He fought Cody Stamen, and Cody Stamen had a lot of success against him. And that's because Cody, he held his ground, he didn't get backed up, he had really good takedown defense, was timing a lot of good shots, he even took Marab down at one point and had some really good reversals against him. Still, overall, Marab did edge him out and get the decision fair and square. But Cody Stamen is not the same level fighter as Peter Yan. Just stylistically, Marab's a nightmare for Yan. So, all in all, I do not believe Marab is as unstoppable as everyone is making him out to be. But with that being said, I think he's probably going to beat Henry Cejudo. Honestly, I feel really bad for Cejudo. At this point, I don't even know if people still remember this, but after the Dominic Cruz fight where he retired, he made this big speech like, oh, I'm the greatest combat sports athlete in the world. I'm retiring on top. Yeah. Well, immediately after retiring, he was calling for all these super fights. He wanted the Volkanovski fight at 145 to become a triple champ. He wanted to box Ryan Garcia. But just none of it came to fruition. None of it. And honestly, I just don't think Henry was as big of a star as he thought he was. So eventually, he just had to come back to the bantamweight division. But still, most people thought he was going to beat Aljamain Sterling. I mean, Sterling seems to have some holes in the striking. He was a Division three wrestler. Sohudo, gold medalist at the most prestigious wrestling tournament there is. So, people really didn't think Aljo had a shot, and it was clear, out in the open, Cejudo was the far, far more skillful wrestler. He defended all of Aljo's takedowns really easily, had some really good takedowns of his own, but up against the fence, the size and strength difference was really evident. And also, skill-wise, it's a bit of a mediator, because fence wrestling is just a different art than wrestling out in the open. But the big thing to me was how much stronger, how much longer Aljo was. I mean, sure, on the scale, Cejudo's probably walking around just as much as most 35ers are. But at the end of the day, his frame is small. He has the frame of a 125 pounder. And that makes me pretty nervous given the fact he's fighting somebody who is super takedown heavy and is massive. Look, I'm sure when Marab shoots out in the open, Henry's gonna be able to stay upright. But he's going to get pushed into the fence. And Marab is three inches taller with a four inch longer reach. I think it's going to be extremely difficult for Cejudo to fight off the clinch. 
And even if he is able to do that, Marab is just going to shoot again. Now, in the striking, I do give Cejudo the slight advantage, but key word there on slight. Cejudo did put a bit of a striking clinic on Dominic Cruz, but that was Dominic's first fight back after four years, being out because of how many injuries he had been suffering with. So was that prime Dominic Cruz? Probably not. Henry's fight with Marlon Moraes was very impressive, but... Henry was really struggling in kickboxing range. He wasn't defending the leg kicks. He was having a real hard time reaching Marais with his hands. But the thing about Marlon was, he's a bit like Edson Barbosa. Really high level Muay Thai, good kicks, but in boxing range, a little iffy. So when Henry really closed the distance, got in clinching range, Marais would just try to disengage. He did not want to grapple with Cejudo, which really opened up the punches. But let's say Henry does that against Marab, closes the distance, tries to get in the clinch and land punches. Marab's not going to try to disengage. He's going to meet Henry in the clinch and look for takedowns. Even if Henry is able to land some clean punches, Marab is so, so, so durable. Look, I'm an American. I want to root for the Americans. I want USA Wrestling to be number one. But in this matchup in particular, I just don't see it. I think Henry Cejudo is overall more skilled, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Maybe Cejudo catches him with a knee while he's shooting or, or something like that. Anything's possible, but I think the most likely scenario for this fight is a 30-27 decision to Marab Devlashilovich. Divlishi, Marab Devlash, Marab Devlish, Div Divlishi, Div Divlishi, 